Hi loves, good morning, good afternoon or evening depending on the time of day it is. How are you? It's Legester Vixen here. And again, we're doing another catechar. Uh, catech I forgot how to say his name already. <laughs> Shoot, I'm sorry. <laughs> but we're doing another video. This was requested by Sonic EXER, or Sonic Xer. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. And this is the um, useless world of PS1 accessories. I didn't realize how long it was. A minute and 25 seconds, gotcha. I know it's an hour and 25 minutes, but still. Hour, yeah, it's over an hour. So this should be fun. All right, let's go ahead and dive right into it. One day. Where are you? No, I didn't say go to New Zealand. I said go and get me New Zealand. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm this Pedicurus, is randomness. And you're not. You want to know something Found that not. everybody loves? Video game accessories. You know, when you take something like a controller that works and then you make it stop working. Tony Hawk is great fun, but you know what I hate? Doing this. We need to make that more fun. Real life skateboard, not only even more fun than that, but also works much better. Thank God we don't need to worry about hitting that one button ever again. I didn't even do that. Now, I'm not just an old forgotten hag. I do think that accessories <laughs> and video me. games have their place, and PlayStation in particular have been ahead of the curve with tons of useful ones or ones that just provide good, clean fan. That's a dirty fan. Like the Guitar Hero controller, the PS3 memory card adapter, okay, yeah. the PS2 DVD remote, the PlayStation VR, and even the PS3 six-axis motion controller, which went down extremely well in the incel market. Thanks, David Cage. But for every motion activated bra removal tutorial, there's a TV signal aerial for the PSP, or a PS Vita only memory card, or a PS3. That. Book, or a Dragon Quest slime controller. That's. Because this is comfortable. Um, so I've never seen that before. That is very disturbing. <laughs> like, I, I, I get the gist of it, but that's. No. No. <laughs> He's looking at it. I'm okay with this. Or even PlayStation Move boxing gloves. Yes, these are real. It's just a regular boxing glove with an elastic strap for the controller. It does absolutely nothing. You still have to hold the controller. What else am I supposed to do with this? Punch someone and then immediately celebrate? <laughs> this is just me talking about nowadays. Did you know that Sony were the kings of useless plastic shit even back in the day when they were making prototype controllers and then leaving them at the bus station for people to take and then sell for 9,000 pounds? And even though you got the occasional useful or cool thing like the vibrating double analog stick DualShock controller or interchangeable memory cards yeah. or unofficial cheat discs to break your games in half, the mm -hmm. PS1 had even more absolute garbage tier accessories than people realize. Please so welcome one and all to my... Bleh. So welcome one and all to my journey, looking through as many PS1 accessories that I could find on Please. eBay or afford because holy shit, second mortgage. But I don't want to start off negatively. I'm someone who likes to look for the good in everything. Good. So before we jump into the skid marks, let's take a look at the nice clean pants, such as with this thing here, the PS1 multi-tap. Aha, good day, mates. <laughs> Oh, blimey. The PS1 multi-tap, or if you'd prefer, the multi-branchment, was one of the first accessories released for the PS1 and is a nifty little device to allow you to play four-player local multiplayer. And that's it. But I always thought this thing looked pretty cool. It could even help you out with your math. But whatever you do, do not directly touch the metal part or I'll have to get a restraining order. Other than that, though, there's not much to say. It's four controller slots that plugs into one controller slot. If you drop it on the floor, it'll come back to you. And after the Nintendo 64 came out with four controller ports already installed, Sony executives then realized they shat it all up and went... Oh, and while we're on the topic of Sony messing things up, let's talk about this thing. Now, I know what you're gonna say, but Caddy, that isn't an accessory. It's a rope. Well, no, this is an optional thing that you used to be able to buy for your PlayStation, and it was for this exact purpose. 
if you happen to have two giant CRT TVs, which are just like regular TVs nowadays, but with diabetes, two <laughs> PS1 controllers, two copies of a certain game, and then put all of them together in the same room, you could play two-player multiplayer. Yes, I'm not joking. Only about five PS1 games in total were compatible with four-player with this thing, so mostly you were doing this for the sake of two-player. Probably because they knew that you wouldn't be able to fit four people in a room where you set it all up. When the PS1 first launched in 1995, many of its multiplayer games were not compatible with two controllers out of the box, even though there's two slots for two controllers on it out of the box. So that meant if you were a kid in the mid-90s, you needed to go through all of this effort just to play Wipeout 2097 with little Johnny toe rag. Sony justified this baffling thing by arguing it was like an arcade experience at home. But you weren't in an arcade. You were in mummy study. <sighs> This thing is an umbilical cord of hate. It's useless. I never knew anybody that owned one. And if you're upset with me saying this about your beloved rubbery intestine, please ring up and send in all of your complaints to 0800 303 Yes. 3 3 Yay! <laughs> oh, well, three, eight. <laughs> What's that smell? What's it what smelling? Dad, it's a rat! It's a rat! Kill it! Kill it! This is the PS1 mouse, a Walmart special for fourteen <laughs> ninety six, including tax. And honestly, I think that's a bargain. It even comes with a free piece of gum from 1995. Yes, my friends, if you lived in the 90s and were too cheap for a... Then this was the best compromise you could deal with to get a PC experience on your TV. Check it out, you even got a really sweet mouse map. Isn't it supposed Sweet. to be white? Now, I actually think this is one of the coolest additions to the PS1. At this point, I'd usually make some comment about P, but this thing works perfectly for the few point-and-click games available on the PS1. <laughs> and it gives you smoother mouse movement than real smooth. Mm, yes, very smooth. It even allows you to aim and shoot in a few first-person shooters. Well, that's very good. The best thing about it, though, undoubtedly, is that it can be used to play Irritating Stick. This is what made the PS1 mouse fly uh. off the shelves. The chance to turn Irritating Stick into Reasonable Stick. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Ah. No. It's an impossible game. <laughs> All over again. Eat it. Here's another thing you could choke on, the pocket station. The first ever portable Sony console. Yeah, you thought the PSP was the first? You're thick. And here it is. Isn't it precious? It's no, tiny. it isn't a gravestone for moths. It's a Japanese-only, ultra-tiny game console that triples as a PS1 save game manager and an alarm clock. The most important things you need in your pocket. You can use it as a standard memory card and then look through the save data later on with tiny bit crushed animated save uh, game icons. Yeah, you wink at me, Coco. Don't worry. I know. I know I'm on. You can change the volume. Yes, that's a separate feature. But the best thing is when it works with certain PS1 games for extra features and to download mini games directly onto it to play portably. Like Block QT, which sounds like a Minecraft babe, but is actually a breakout clone that triples the length of the stage and makes the ball the size of measles. There's also a Pocket Moo Moo, a space shooter with absolutely no cows, and Tales of Eternia, a rhythm game mixed with Tamagotchi but with a real woman. And just like in real life, I can never seem to make her happy. Some of these save icons though look like phlegm. Believe it or not, this is Solid Snake. More like deflated hippo. Although, to be fair, this Rupture Farms icon from Oddworld looks pretty damn great. Oh, sorry, it's not Oddworld in Japan, it's Ava Go Go! Why is he coming out of his own? <laughs> Honestly, this version of the game is worth owning alone just for the Japanese Abe voice. Listen to how cute it is. Hello, it's like if Abe was voiced by Michael Jackson. Hello, hello. Doo -doo feces. And as far as the slig voices go, <laughs> I think he's having a hernia. But Abe is just... <sighs> okay, that kind of like ruined it because it, it delayed all my pausing, my initial pause, but still. Too damn cute! Hey guys, come down and see this! Oh, wait. 
She took the kids. Like I said, this thing was sadly Japanese only and never made it out of its home country. Oh. But Sony did at one point have bigger plans for it, since a few Western games do work with it, like Ridge Racer Type 4 and even Final Fantasy VIII. But it really is only a few. You'll find that 98% of all compatible games have to be the Japanese copies. So make sure you dig up your Japanese Metal Gear Solid from Konami the best. Yeah, they sure are. And get ready to learn a brand new language from space, otherwise you're better off just... Oh no, scratch that, you don't need to learn Japanese. The Crash 3 manual is English. I mean, don't you remember his famous Ringo bazooka? I like children. And now we move on to one of the coolest things I own. Yes! Yes, if you didn't think your PS1 already looked enough like a toilet, Oh, shit. Then feast your eyes on this bastard. Eat your heart out, Steam Deck. Steam Deck, what is that? A cruise ship? Nintendo Switch, what's that? I thought I already had one of them. Uh -huh. If you wanted to play 3D games on the go in the late 90s and early 2000s, you got this thing, the PS1 LCD screen. The PS1 Little Crinkly Dentist. I have wanted this thing desperately ever since I was a kid when I first saw an ad for it in the front cover inlay for Stuart Little 2. Sometimes the best things come in little packages. The PS1 LCD screen for men below the national average. <laughs> oh, lovely. Now I'm thinking about Stuart Little's Little Stuart. The screen itself comes with built-in speakers, brightness buttons, and even a headphone jack. All you need is a power supply wall socket near you, and you're ready to go. I've always wanted to play Goofy's Funhouse in McDonald's. <laughs> as long as you can plug it in and have a PS1 disc and controller, you can use it. You can even play it on the train if you want. Yes! I beat Psycho Mantis! I cannot deny that this is probably my favorite PS1 accessory of all time, mm -hmm. even for as toilety as it looks. You see, this is where the brown goes, and this, this is the secret bit. <laughs> Do you think they animated it under his trousers? Oh, I completely forgot to tell all of you. Recently, I noticed that fuel prices were going up, so I did the sensible thing and I got me one of them new hybrid cars. Kill me! Oh, but this next thing I'm gonna show you? Pfft, way cooler than that. Thank you. That was terrifying. It cost me more money. I'm broke. Now, the LCD screen may be my favorite PS1 accessory, but this... This is, without a doubt, the crown jewel of my PS1 collection so far. See this box? It isn't any ordinary PS1 console box, because inside it is a Neturose development kit PS1, which is not only able to play any PlayStation game from any region, but is also in matte black. Oh. <gasps> uh... Oh, it's an American plug, so I can't use it. <gasps> this thing looks so good, man. Look uh -huh. at it. Oh, it's pretty. Oh, be my wife. I'm not even kidding. It's making me hyperventilate. For those who don't know, all the way back in the late 90s, this system was available for sale bundled with a development kit to connect to your computer, allowing the public to create their own PS1 games from scratch just for fun. After which, these nutcases would then give their games away for free via PlayStation demo discs in magazines, the ultimate form of unpaid labor. Take notes, EA. The console I personally own does have the original system and box it came in, but none of the software discs, manuals, or coding books. So me making my own game is not going to happen today, or probably ever. But at the very least, I can finally say that I own the piece of hardware that birthed the greatest death sound of all time. That was done with this. Surprisingly though, there's tons of rules for it. Just look at this. Don't use a mining drill on it. Don't set it on fire. And while you're at it, don't touch it. But that's not all. Don't plug it in. Don't feed it. Don't paint it. Don't plug it in. Don't put games in it. Don't boil a kettle on it. Don't slap it while a window's open. Don't use it in an earthquake. Don't sleep on it. Don't use it as a shoe. And whatever you do, don't listen to music. Just in general. You'll die. In fact, the only rule here that doesn't have a giant no next to it is a picture of a baby reaching for it. So make sure you teach your kids to climb up and grab it. Okay, we've made a pretty good start into this video, I'd say. And for the most part, we've seen some pretty nifty PS1 gadgets. Some pretty useful, some Sorry. pretty cool. It's been alright so far. But not anymore.
It's time to turn up the vomit volume because no. from now on until the end of this video, we are scraping the bottom of the crusty barrel. No! Oh, is that what I think we really need for the PS1? Oh, no, Bill. What, what do we need? Oh, well, John, I'll tell you what we need. I don't know. We need a mobile phone adapter. No, I'm not joking. This is a device to connect a 90s cell phone to your PS1 with a software disc. Hello? Is that PlayStation? <laughs> the best way I can describe this ridiculous thing is that if you owned a Japanese cell phone that was compatible with Docomo's eye mode, you could wire your brick into your PS1 and basically unlock it as a retro smartphone. Think of it like an external display. You could do all of your contact and office organizing, transfer data and games to your phone, and even use your phone's network provider to browse the internet on your TV. Oh. oh, it's my brick phone. The baby didn't make it. You heard it right here, folks. One second you could be on your PS1 playing Sesame Street Sport, and then the next you could plug in your phone and mash one out. Have a look at this Mayan artifact, uh -huh. Motorola Graphite. They aren't uh -huh. even pretending it doesn't look like a slab of concrete. You know what, though? I do miss the days when bad phone signal meant grow more phone and yes. this thing this thing is so old the battery turned into sawdust <gasps> have i seen this man no i haven't ding dong ding there's someone at the ding i wonder who that yes hello caddy oh cripes it's my evil twin brother baddy yes so what do you want <laughs> Is that, is that a PS1 train controller? That... <laughs> what you're looking at here is the Go 2 premium pack, a Japanese only PS1 bundle pack with two things, a train simulator game and a train deck controller that was made only for this single game and nothing else. Choo choo, Thomas. This thing is absolutely adorable. I can't hate it. It's like a real tiny train for real tiny Tom Cruises. It even has a tiny drink holder for your tiny Mountain Dew. I mean... Well, this is the single most seductive train simulator I've ever played. Look at the high energy, the passion, the craft of the editing. It's bordering on 18 plus. Oh, watch out, it's an anime girl. On the train. Okay. There's how they go. So here we are at the main menu. Now, the menu is navigated by you pushing and pulling this little mushroom while the horn buttons confirm and go back. And to be honest, I'm terrified by whatever the material hall of train is. So let's keep things simple in arcade mode. Uh, that one. Yeah. He's yeah. got a friendly face. Okay, so now we have our objective. Drive a train. Thanks for the hints. I can't read them. And with that, we unlock the brakes with this thing here, pull this thing back to give it gas, and oh my god, we're a train! And you know the best thing? That's all you need to know. It's really that simple. You move this to the right whenever you want to tighten the brakes, and pull this back whenever you want to... So even though I don't know what this is or what that is, it doesn't matter because I know the speed limit, I know how much time I have left, and I know how far away I am from my next checkpoint. Oh no, I'm running out of time. Oh god, come on, come on, come on, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it, come on, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it! You're welcome. So oh damn it, I failed. Fine, I'll continue. Huh? Game over? I lost the whole game because I wanted to keep going. Oh, what's that? I got a high score? That's nice of you. What's my name? Soil. And this is all very well and good. But? But can you play Crash Bash with it? We boot up the game and unfortunately we can't move the cursor, but I can select whatever option is already highlighted, meaning I can actually boot up single player, no problem. And this was all gearing up to be a massive disappointment until we got to the warp room, at which point all hell broke loose. <laughs> Your eyes don't deceive you. I am perpetually running in place without actually moving anywhere as a monkey with a crocodile tail and a blowhole for a face. In fact, I can't do anything other than run left, run right, and run towards the camera. I can't go forward at all. And because I can't go forward, I can't pick any levels. But at least I can do a damn good running man. Yeah, boy! Work it, sink to lips! Okay, so maybe this controller only works with left and right movements, so... 
Why don't we try a racing game like Roll Cage? Well, for some reason, whenever the game starts up with the train controller plugged in, it boots up in French. It must be because it reminds it of the Eurostar. As you can see, it is absolutely unplayable chaos, which is a massive <laughs> shame because now I have to quit a la course when I really want to continue here. Ah, uh -huh, the French. But now we have to ask a real question. Can you drive Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver <gasps> with a train? Here I'm... is the game. As you I'm... can see, we, we've left the station and the... I forgot that game existed. Oh my gosh. I should pick that back up. My gosh. The weird funny. thing is that every single position on the train does something slightly different. I don't think I can get out of this Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, I don't want to get out of this room anymore. This is a great time. Yeah, go on. <laughs> fit off. Well, I mean, you've got more movement than Crash Bash. <laughs> And much like Roll Cage, every single notch on both sticks does a completely different combination of things. Do you want to move forward while keeping the camera rotating? Do you want to crawl while shifting back and forth? Do you want to jump around in a stupid circle like some sort of Maytime fertility ritual? Then there's a gear stick position for you. Oh. If you ever wanted to feel like a tiny man trying to pilot somebody's brain while they have a blood clot, then this is the game for you. But what about a 2D platformer like the original Gex? Sadly, that doesn't work whatsoever. But do you know what does? Rival schools. Huh. Apparently I'm picking them. Well, these kids must love school so much they can't stop themselves jumping 30 feet in the air every two seconds. Whoa, slow down, old horse. And aside from the non-stop jumping, I could only figure out how to move left and right with one end of the controller and grab or kick with the other end. Amazingly, though, I'm somehow winning. Oh, yeah, I'm drop-kicking kids in the face with a train break. <laughs> and that was the train controller. <laughs> what? You don't think it can get any worse? Oh, trust me, it gets weirder than that from here on out, let me tell you. That, that is far from the end of the treasure trove. I mean, take a look at this thing, even. Yeah, it's a Resident Evil gamepad made specifically and only for Resident Evil games. The run button is right next to the ready weapon button. Firing your weapon is a separate trigger on the back. With that half of the controller being shaped like a handgun, your map and inventory have separate buttons each, and it even has a turbo mode in case you want to do this. Yeah, what's coming up next gets even more demented than that. Even in the world of something as simple and innocuous as the PS1 memory card. Yeah. Even these tiny little things can be screwed up. Oh, okay. That memory card looks like it's about to sell me something. Hello, I'm Spons! <laughs> and today I'm here to talk to you about NordVPN, the number one rated VPN from Nord. NordVPN is a service that gives your devices their own private encrypted network when connected to the internet to stop prying eyes getting your good stuff. Look at him. He thinks your credit card looks hot. And who can blame him? That jawline could cut a salmon. Well, don't worry, because with NordVPN, you can remove him. <laughs> Permanently? With their new threat protection feature, keeping you extra safe from trackers, nasty ads, and harmful websites or files, especially on public Wi-Fi. And I should know, because I've been making parts of this video away from home using NordVPN on public Wi-Fi while keeping completely secure. But you still need to keep your door secure! <laughs> Hello? There are thousands of servers around the world, so wherever you are, you can remain private, safe, and with the fastest possible speeds. Not to mention, if you can't access a website in your country, just change your virtual location and get in there. <laughs> Unblock region locked games, find discounts from other countries, avoid DDoS attacks, block malware, ridden websites. If all of this sounds good to you, then head to the description right now to nordvpn.com forward slash Catechorus and use the promo code Catechorus. C-A-D-D-I-C-A-R. Couldn't we get an easier code? And you'll get an exclusive offer of a two-year plan with the first month entirely free. Not to mention, if you don't like this service, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee for you and me. So get NordVPN to the... Oh, oh, no, oh my god! Once again, the web address and promo code nordvpn.com forward slash Catechorus. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to bed. Good night, sweet prince. Are you making me save South Park Chef's Love Shack? These were some of the best things about the PS1. You saved your game to these and not the physical games themselves like with most of the Nintendo library. If you needed to replace your game disc for whatever reason, the memory card was always going to be there to catch you. Yes. 
your basic grey official ones, but for a lot of people, they were a little too expensive wency <laughs> So instead, you got yourself a third-party one, usually from a video game store with its branding spat all over it, but sometimes with cool little extra benefits like digital displays to let you know how many memory blocks you had left on that card, or extra info printed on the back, like how many megabytes it is which doesn't help you in any single way even slightly and then you have the ones where you're sitting there and you say to yourself oh boy i really like this plastic shell that saves my games but i really wish it had more driver on it and then boom well there you go wish granted check out this disgraceful turd this was officially licensed by the makers of the game by the way it's one thing adding a monocle on top of a thing that does absolutely nothing but they went the extra step to assure that the bloody logo is upside down whenever you use it gee thanks mum i always wanted to play that game benibbed well thankfully if you don't like driver one or you don't want your memory card looking like an egyptian hieroglyphic slab you can have a driver two memory card instead much better simple sophisticated the right way up and surprisingly curvy why does this memory yeah. card have childbearing hips and then all the way in morica a hotshot business ceo heard someone say this and got an idea Jerry, we need to make our memory cards hot! No, sir, stop it! Isn't this enough? It needs tits, Jerry! And so we ended up with this, the Tomb Raider 3 character memory card that is literally just the top half of Lara Croft surgically fused onto a bit of plastic. The attention to detail of which is so accurate, they made extra sure to put holes where they would be in real life. Although there are three here, so I guess she had a bad tear. Special serial numbered collector's edition. Wow, sounds rare. I'd better make sure to be extra careful when I remove it. Oops. I heard you liked Lara's bones. <coughs> I mean, if you want to talk about unnecessary, this is probably where the definition of the word came from. Sure, it's a functional PS1 memory card, but that's all there is to it. You can't use it as an action figure. She's upside down while you're using it. Her waistline doesn't fit on the plastic. Her entire back half doesn't exist. I mean, I've definitely heard of being flat chested, but how about being flat backed? And I'm sorry, but I still can't get over the fact that my memory card has a rack. I suppose you could argue at least they focused on the right end, but just let that sink in for a second. This is the only thing in the world that saves your PS1 games and has breeds. I don't know what to say on that. And I then your dad it. would come in. And then he'd say to you, Oh, hi, son. I'm sorry I was gone for a while. <laughs> say, that's a nice play, Tendo, you've got there. Can I use my floppy disks for my computer on that? And then you turn around and say, no, Dad. And then he turned back to you and said, You lie! You lie! He's a child! No, I am not making this up. This is a PS1 computer floppy disk adapter for your memory card slot. I wish I knew about that. School bag in. This is an exceedingly rare piece of tech from the 90s. And at the time, I'm sure it was useful since floppy disks were so much cheaper than memory cards. But uh -huh. nowadays, because it's so rare, I forked out $450 for it. $450 so that you can save your copy of Anna Kornikova smash court tennis on your dad's old naked picture drive so yeah if you want to play your old ps1 games and save your data do not get these they're too rare too expensive no one even uses floppy disks anymore and to sum it up in one word screw off here's a relatable situation when you're playing your ps1 do you ever find that you're struggling so much on chicken run that you get so mad and it's enough for you to do this no never yeah. well then Get therapy. And then buy yourself the Namco Nedgecon. Yes, it's called the Nedgecon. N-E-G-Con, Negcon. I don't know, I don't care. I'm calling it the Nedgecon. And if you don't like that and try to correct me, then I know you're somebody I don't want to hang out with. Check this out. Yes, the Nedgecon allows you to twist your controller. My favorite pastime next to beat the dog up. And to give credit, it does feel surprisingly natural but these buttons here do not these top buttons here are just regular controller buttons but these ones here are like eight times the height of those buttons and whenever you want them to work you've got to push them all the way in like your gut after a roast it really does feel horrible and i mean just no r2 no l2 no select button this thing is a freak of nature like a really ugly baby 
And just like any good ugly baby, I don't want to kill it until I pretended to drive it around like a racing car. And I'm glad I did because I have to be honest, the original Ridge Racer on this thing is actually my preferred way to play that game. It feels really good to steer twisting the controller and it even steers by the exact amount of pressure you apply to each rotation. But let's get creative here. This thing is a Namco controller, so why don't we try out another Namco hmm. game on it like Soul Blade? Well, this is why, because all the twisting the controller does is block, which actually makes you look like you're blocking yourself from Voldo's scary colander knob and if you try the nedgecon with pac-man world you'll find that you can actually customize the controls in the options to whatever buttons you'd like meaning that oh yeah i can shoot by twisting left and jump and butt bounce by twisting right this makes the game an instant 10 out of 10 every jump in every game should be mapped to a twisting controller it looks like you've got problems and you're mapping your own buttons on pac-man world so you probably do but imagine how great real life would be if jumping worked like ouch Ah. And you know what's great? Namco didn't even stop there. Those mental cases made another lovely souffle with gone-off eggs. The that? Namco JogCon. The only product in the world with Jog in the title that requires you sit down to use it. Get this, you've got a regular PS1 controller, right? but with a wheel stapled in between its legs, and the wheel doesn't ever centralize when you spin it, meaning that one single turn of it makes you... Oh. Yeah, it's basically a miniature record player Frankenstein on top of a controller, <laughs> and it's even loud enough to sound like you're scratching records as well. But to be fair, it does sound much better when you put it on a real record player. As for the controller itself, it does feel great to hold if you enjoy having your knuckle skin scraped off. And when you play a racing game like Disney World Magical Racing Tour, even though you have a wheel right here to use as a wheel, you can't turn any of the cards, even though this is one of the only single instances where a wheel glued onto your controller would sound like a reasonable thing to do. Well, yeah. Walt Disney World. Unless you're gay, then get out. It doesn't stop there either. If you try playing Spider-Man, the controller works perfectly fine as a standard controller whenever the wheel mode is turned off, but doesn't work whatsoever when the wheel mode is turned on. And I know what you're thinking. Well, little Jimmy shit pants, just make sure you never turn on the wheel mode and the problem is solved. Except it isn't, because whenever you do turn wheel mode off, the game itself automatically turns it back on and stops itself from being able to be played. Have you ever seen a game actively spit out the controller you're trying to use with it, even though it does have a mode that works? Has Spider-Man on the PS1 learned to hate? Is it racist? And you know what other game discriminates against this controller? Barbie Explorer should be a match made in heaven, right? Namco Jog Con, Barbie Jogs, Yep, that's it. But no, the controller does not work. She's clearly far too Aryan for this. Why do these games allow the controller to work and then override it immediately? I would love to use the JogCon to unlock the secret of the Mystic Mirror with Barbeetum, but she just won't let me. What the hell else can we try then? Uh, break out? Uh, to move the paddle? Surely no. <laughs> It works. I mean, don't get me wrong, the edges of the wheel are horribly jagged and this little round dip is just sharp enough around its edges to eventually blister your thumb. But amazingly, this controller works with the Atari 3D remake of Breakout with the story mode about a rectangle with a face that gets thrown in prison and puts up a swimsuit picture of his rectangle girlfriend because that makes his rectangle feel like a rectangle. And I know what's probably on your mind. Well, this is a Namco controller, so the wheel bit here is probably only compatible fully with Namco games. No. And if you were going to say Ridge Racer Type 4, you'd be correct. Yeah. Yeah? And that's it. Oh. That's the only Namco game I could get working with it. In fact, out of my entire PS1 collection, do you want to know what I managed to get working with this wheel? Ridge Racer Type 4, Breakout, and V-Rally 2. That was it. So if you want a controller for the worst possible way to play these three games and nothing else, then I highly recommend it. Chances are, if you were a kid in the 90s and owned a PS1, you really wanted to shoot someone with a gun. And luckily, when Namco weren't making controllers compatible with as many games as hair on a teenage lip, they were the front runners of the PS1 gun accessory with their classic G-Con 45, featuring a big old bee sting. Personally, I have two PS1 G-Con mm. gun game bundle packs, the original Time Crisis one and the original Point Blank one. And both of these games are the true definition of classic. These are a special kind of cardboard box. You know, the really old ones stored in someone's loft for decades, so they 
They have that distinctive musk that makes you... <laughs> Motion controls and gyro controls are all right for gun games nowadays, but nothing quite matches the same raw satisfaction as aiming an, <laughs> aiming an actual gun at your TV, looking down the sights, and then letting them have your barrel. <laughs> the biggest disappointment with this technology nowadays, though, is that... It doesn't work on any modern day TVs. 4K, HD, it doesn't matter. If it's LCD and has a flat screen, this isn't gonna work. If you wanna get this working, you need to get yourself an old boxy CRT TV. I don't miss those. So I decided to get myself one, and now I feel like a kid again. Point blank, Time Crisis, Lethal Enforcers, Die Hard Trilogy, it's all just as great as I remembered. But if this isn't your kind of thing, or you were a bit worried that you didn't look enough like a specky nerd, you can always use a Star Trek phaser instead. And that's mm. why this gun deserves the salvage. <laughs> This phaser gun in particular is from a company I'm sure you've all heard of before, Mad Cat, the number one controller brand for unloved brothers and sisters. But the advantage of it not being made for PlayStation is that it's Saturn compatible too, and that's pretty neat. But none of this matters because at the end of the day, none of the guns work on modern flat screen TVs. So what you need to do is get yourself a Sindon light gun. Oh yeah, this here is a USB camera-based gun controller that you can use on most PC console emulators that have light gun shooters. And it works scarily well for whenever you want to point your blanks on a big telly. Hey everybody, um, it's Caddy. Um, um, I just wanted to uh, stop this video briefly for a sec because um, it'll be public information soon anyway, so I figured I might as well burst the bubble myself before you hear it from secondhand from someone else, but I didn't have enough time to set up the Sindon light gun and record footage of me using it on an emulator. Uh, I can't, I can't apologize enough. And if that still isn't enough for you, you can always pick up Yay! this. This, this is a handgun. It, it, there's no two ways about it. This is a Glock. This is a bloody gun. It looks exactly like a goddamn handgun. I, it's a gun! Oh yeah, we're stepping out of the boy zone and into the man zone! They couldn't make this thing look any more like a gun if they tried. We're going straight up Coolio's greatest hits over here. No orange tip, no weird shape. I actually had this idea to go to the city and point this at random people for a joke uh, and then show uh, them, ha ha, look, it's a toy gun. But the more I look at it, the more it looks like I actually want to kill them. And I don't think the balaclava was a good idea either. I mean, did you want to look even more badass when playing Resident Evil Survivor? Because with this thing now you can it even has vibration feedback so that you can and I quote Feel every shot. It's not bad enough being detective John McClane shooting an innocent woman at the airport You need to feel like you've done it and make sure you do it with the built-in machine gun mode PlayStation teaching children police brutality is okay since 1995 The wheels on the bus go round and round all day long because someone cut the brakes. Oh no, it's Jim. Do you mind? I was just about to tuck into some Pepsi Maximilian. I'm so, so sorry, but I've got a big circle for you. <laughs> That's nice, but who made it? Meow. Oh, well now we know it's gonna be good. <laughs> Remind me to stop kissing you. The steering wheel. The quintessential console peripheral. Basically every console has their own version of the wheel. Even today, it's like the Cenozoic era. This wheel is probably what Mad Cats is best known for, and for good reason. It's a wheel that steers cars on PlayStation and doesn't break. I mean, take it from the racing legend Mario Andretti himself. It's the number one steering wheel for the PlayStation. Yeah, he really said that right before he took his lovely tanned skin and dyed half of it bright pink. Team Mad Cats. Oh, Jesus. Look at these guys. They look like they run around supermarkets and unpeel bananas. The Mad Cats PS1 <laughs> wheel does everything it says on the tin. It steers, accelerates, brakes, and the vibration feedback on the wheel itself is a fantastic touch. It even uses race-proven foot pedals, which means that they use them in actual racing cars like this guy's. <laughs> But you know what I want to know? Can you drive Silent Hill? And the answer is yes. After Harry Mason crashes his car, 
He then becomes the car. Traffic is great in Silent Hill. I highly recommend it as a cutthroat. You want to hear the best thing, though? For some reason, the acceleration pedal is the run button. You hit the gas to make Harry sprint. It's almost okay. like the cats knew we would try this, and I love them for it. Thanks, Mario. Here we go. It's a me, Mario. Come on, children. But I hear you. Not everybody in the world has quite the same amount of space in their home for something as bulky, thick as this. No thigh gap. So perhaps you'd like to try out the PS1 Ultra Racer controller. Much slimmer, fits in one hand, the healthy option, like wholemeal bread. I mean, it has to be good. It has analog you steering and a non-volatile memory. I wish I did. Honey, you forgot to take the bins out. God damn you, bitch! So let's give this bad boy a wash. I'm going to test it with 3, 2, 1, Smurf. The main cutscene starts up, I'm able to skip it, and then absolutely nothing. I'm playing a driving game with a driving controller and I can't drive. It just doesn't work. I don't have anything else to say. I mean, it does do a lot of little beeps. But that's not enough. Come on, you old rotary dial telephone. I want to play 321 Smith. What do you want me to do instead? Twiddle it? Actually, that's all I want to do with it. Who needs a girlfriend when you have this? Okay, fine. 321 Smurf is a baby's kart racing game, probably not made with wheel controllers in mind. So how about we try something a little bit fairer, like V-Rally 1. And before we get into the actual test, I can't imagine when the hell I'll ever talk about this game again, so I just have to mention the music for a second. This tune that plays during the level select screen is absolutely hilarious. It's the funkiest thing ever written, but also sounds like the band drop all of their instruments on the floor every few seconds. <laughs> As for the game itself with the controller, yep, it works. It's a wheel, it steers, it moves the car with the same level of sensitivity you put on the wheel. It's a wheel. <laughs> breathe. Can you breathe? Another wheel. The PS1 top drive reactor. It's shaped like a toy car remote control and it uses the latest active jogging technology. Hey, hey, get back. <laughs> this thing is an absolute disgrace. It's not a game controller, it's an assault rifle. L2, L3, R2, R3, and select is down here. There's multiple switches here, a D-pad in the middle of the action buttons like a DVD remote, a start button up here, two separate triggers right on top of each other, L1 and R1 here, minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, plus two. Did the Zodiac Killer make this? Converts DualShock games into active feedback. What the hell are you talking about? Am I having a stroke logic three more like unlogic four okay well to give this thing a little bit of credit to start with the wheel didn't centralize just like the one on the jog con but then immediately after plugging it into the console the wheel springs magically into position <laughs> that's pretty high tech and it definitely works for sure but if you're trying to play slippery old Toy Story Racer with it, you're going to want to exit your own life very quick and painlessly. You will just oversteer all the time and flip your shit around constantly. So next I thought I'd try Micro Machines V3. Only one problem, though. You can't go. For this game, you have to use your thumb on the X button. No switches here made a difference. So then I jumped back into Gran Turismo to see if it was just incompatible. But nope, exactly the same story. I couldn't accelerate with this thing no matter how much I tried. So I guess it's just luck that decides whenever it wants to work. And that's exactly what I want with my game controllers that are needed to control the game. Luck. Not that I care anyway, because you can't imagine how uncomfortable this thing is. Steering while holding X like a chimpanzee is one thing. But in general, it's too bulky, too heavy and it only works with Toy Story Racer so <laughs> and I would just throw this thing in the skip but there's one very important question I need to answer with it can you drive the Grinch yes you can very gradually. The D-pad here does not work, but all the other buttons do, so you're basically just stuck nudging him left and right with the steering wheel over and over again to make him step forward Grinch Turismo. Hey, have you got anything else other than wheels? Ooh, dog. What? A guitar controller for the PS1? Mm -hmm. That's strange, isn't it? <laughs> Back in 1999, it was actually Konami that came up with the idea for an arcade-based rhythm game featuring a guitar controller, which would then go on to inspire the much more well-known guitar hero and rock band years later. It was called Guitar Freaks, just like this guy. 
Cabinet later got some ports onto the PS1 with the guitar peripheral in Japan only again. And you know what? Aside from the two missing fret buttons, this thing is practically indistinguishable from Guitar Hero. It even has a built-in motion-activated command to go into extra scoring mode, but the game calls it Wailing Play. Okay. The Guitar Freaks games are basically just Guitar Hero, but simpler and on the PS1. There's not much to say, so how about we try to Guitar Dino Crisis? I'm not doing anything. Okay, so the strumming bar does absolutely nothing at all, and all you can do with the three fret buttons is open your menu or waddle forward like Santa in a buffet. You do not stop turning left, no matter how much you shout at the game, so the only way to move forward is to wait for the lady to orbit around to the correct direction, move forward for a little bit, stop, and repeat. It's not so much like you're playing Dino Crisis, and more like you're making your way back to your bed in the middle of the night cosplaying as the moon. So why don't we try out Pandemonium instead? Okay. Whoa, Jesus H Christ in slippers! Calm down, woman! Stop it! Slow down! Oh, oh. She nothing. can't. Is that it? You're not going to stop? Don't play Pandemonium with a PS1 guitar. More at 11. Okay, last test. Driver 2. A driving game might actually work with this thing. Now, this is one of my favorite combinations. Guitar and Driver 2. And I'll show you why. Well, first of all, strum bar doesn't do anything. That kind of sucks. But luckily, we've got some other buttons. Red button does that. Not very useful. Um, blue button breaks, which is useless right now because we're not moving. Green button goes forward. So we can't steer. But my favorite part of all of this is that tilting does this. <laughs> oh? Oh, hello, I noticed you there. Say, do you like my new gaming peripheral? It's a wrist strap finger piano. <laughs> Another pissing wheel! It's the PS1 Mega Racer Controller. Yes, just when you thought we were done, it's the sequel to Oh, Oh No. Is this thing a controller or a shitting banana? The D-pad feels horrible. It's really stiff uh -uh. like an old sponge is stuck underneath it. But the strange thing is that the wheel itself works absolutely fine. I'd say it was better than the Namco one. And this was made by Who Cares Limited. I'm getting so sick of racing games though. Can we play... Pl <laughs> Holy shit, you can. Yes, lads, this actually works. If you ever wanted to steer Yoshimitsu into a little Japanese nature activist, then pick up this controller right now and relish in the fact that you can't jump, duck, or do any moves that involve pressing up or down while wondering where all of the grease on the rubber came from. Finally, now I can sit down and enjoy my maximum pep. I'm kidding. Excuse me? It's another wheel. <laughs> I think. A Formula Racer wheel by Gamester. So we must be in safe hands. This is the biggest piss of the lot. Look what at this madman contraption. What do you do with it? Play games or do garden <laughs> landscaping? Here's a good quote for an incredible racing experience. Said no one. This is a contagious mass that doesn't know if it's a game controller or a wheel, so ends up looking like it wants to kill itself. I can practically hear it crying at me to end it. It's only one quarter of a wheel, and the rest is a big red roof tile. Plus, all of the R triggers and buttons are sprinkled randomly all over the back and extremely hard to press, making it look like you're tickling a giant clam. And the worst thing about it is that it works, but at what cost? Because I can't figure out if I should hold it like this, or this, or this. Let's try playing Tombi on it. And I'm very happy I did because I actually prefer using this controller for side scrollers instead of racers. It works surprisingly brilliantly and even has vibration support. What the hell am I doing with my life? I'm driving a caveman with pink hair into a farting bum tree. And the best feature of the whole controller is plastered right on the box. It turns. Yep, it's a wheel. I'd like to think it does. Okay, I swear to God, that's it. No more wheels, I promise. There's way too many other stupid controllers to look at, so I'm done with all of the wheels. I hope that so. That reminds me, I haven't looked over <coughs> at this end of the room for a while. Here we go! Oh, hello. I'm Long Dennis! Ooh, hoo hoo! How fun. Yeah! I want to play a game with you! In one hand, I'll have another accessory, and in the other hand, I'll have the wicked itch. Uh. That one. Oh no! Get ready for the wicked itch! 
Yeah. <laughs> the other one. Yeah! Gee, thank you so much, Long Dennis. I can't wait to play with the Gamester motion controller. Oh, Long. Control is... Thing. Control <laughs> games with the slightest movement. That sounds utterly miserable. This is the Gamester Evolution motion sensitive control system. An entirely motion based PlayStation supermarket barcode scanner with a wrist attachment that looks like it could send drones to a small village. Looking in Egypt. The strap smells like weed. When you use <laughs> it, you hold onto one end while strapping the other on for the motion stuff. But while using that end, you need to be certain that you're dead central on all axes the entire time. Which means holding your arm out like this, looking like if C-3PO was made of ham. The idea with this half of the thing is that you can program any PS1 button you want onto each tilted direction, combined with the physical buttons here. So if you want to play Muppet Race Mania and make Accelerate shutting the trap door and slowing down Oh, steady on, boy! Then you can do that. But what you can't do is turn off any of the tilted inputs. You have to assign a command to every direction. And it's so easy to accidentally activate all of them at once that in a racing game, you might as well make left and right tilting the steering, meaning that Kermit just goes off on one wherever the hell he feels like, leaving you overcorrecting your own twisted arm as if you're puppeteering an actual Muppet that kidnapped your family. You can get creative with this thing though, no doubt. Like if you play Moto Racer 2 and set Accelerate to tilting your arm back like a real bicycle. Or Tomb Raider, where you can twist left to get your guns out and then lift your arm back to fire them like a real woman but overall it's absolutely horrendous which makes this half of the controller even funnier all of the buttons are right here to press and work so why don't we just use them but i can't let this thing beat me give me a game to beat with it any game at all i'm cad the chad i can handle it where's my reptile puzzle oh christ we're all dead <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 no. Oh, ah. This is going great. I can't even get out of the playpen. Look at this. Look at this. I love it. I, I love it so much. Oh, no. Oh, dear. I'm on the table. Tommy, get off of the sofa. You're going to hurt yourself. You can't handle anymore. You've already given yourself brain damage as it is. It doesn't matter what mode you're in or which way you twist the ant coffin. This lousy great dollop just doesn't work. But surely it must. It has audio sounds. Well, I suppose if you want to play Rugrats and actually feel like an infant that can't walk, then this is the way you want to do it. How about we try a rhythm game like Um Jamma Lammy? <laughs> you know, this controller is supposed to make you feel like... But in reality, you look like this. Not to mention, it absolutely kills your arm. Am I Jim Caddick or bloody Geppetto? But hey, you know what else this thing can do? It can be used to map analog stick directions. So you know what that means? Ape escape, baby. Only problem is, you can only do one of two things. One, program this thing to read only one analog stick, meaning you can only run or use gadgets. Or two, program two directions to use gadgets while the other two directions move you around. Uh -uh. That's what I did. Look at me go. All I can do is move left and right. And even then, I can't really move left or right. Go on, Spike. You can do it. Ignore the chafing. Well, at the very least, I can do this. Yes, finally, my lifelong dream realized. I can cast a monkey net like a camp whipping boy. I'm absolutely stunned that this doesn't work, but how can that be? It incorporates dual force and technology. Come on, I can catch a monkey, at least one monkey before I quit. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, this is pointless. I can't catch anything with this. It's easier catching head lice. <laughs> Nah, man, I'll show you the real way to use this bad boy. Boot up Tekken 2, program left no. fist attacks to tilting forward, input the first person mode wireframe cheat, and immediately you are part of the game. Even I have to admit, coolest thing I've ever done. Gamester no. Evolution, made for men with cardboard beards. Oh god, finally. You know what though? Sometimes you don't want gimmicks. You don't want wheels, you don't want motion, you don't want guitars, you don't even want trains. Sometimes you only want a controller. Yes. that isn't made by the people who make the console. And that's where third-party controllers come in, like with this Titan Concepts controller I've got here, for use with PlayStation or the P-Zone. Made in China. 
by Paul. A lot of these kinds of controllers are the same thing. They function identically to Sony's controllers, but break within one day. They can sometimes uh -huh. come with extra benefits, though, like the pre-mentioned turbo button on the Resident Evil pad that automatically presses a single button for you over and over again, faster than you can think. <laughs> but what got me interested in this controller in particular was this little feature here, a slow mode. I have never heard of this before. Well, while I'm uh. already here, let's try it out on Pappy Rappy. <laughs> Huh. Okay. How about Shadow Man? Right, so slow mode doesn't do anything here either, which sucks because Shadow Man could really do with running slower. Turbo mode works absolutely fine though, meaning I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> this begs the question though, what does slow mode do? Well, believe it or not, it took me multiple tries in multiple games before I landed on one that made me figure it out. Santa Claus saves the earth. So get this, when you aren't using the turbo button to make Santa have a sugar-induced heart attack, the slow mode actually does this. Yes, it pauses and unpauses the game as quick as the game you're playing allows, and that's it. This is apparently what the controller calls slow, and I can see why because it's stupid. Metal Gear Solid, it did exactly the same thing. Mr. Domino, a game that could really benefit from a slow mode, did exactly the same thing. The only, and I repeat, only time this slow mode would actually help you is if the game you're playing has a pause screen that is instant and doesn't flip between two totally different screens all the time, so you're left going bleh, 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 all over the floor. Rayman 1 is one of those games, and sure, it's tolerable, but if you'd rather play the game like this, I'd have to interview your parents to find out where they went wrong with you. Crash 1 is is another one that works and it's probably my favorite because the music and sound effects don't pause along with the game meaning that if you die you get treated to an extra long game over screen just as painful as actual death oh god now who's at the door hello again oh great is my evil twin <laughs> Oh, no, okay. So this controller by Titan Concepts, yeah, it wasn't the only third-party controller for the PS1. And if you thought there were only a few third-party manufacturers out there, you couldn't be more wrong. They were everywhere. There were hundreds of them. You found some newspaper. My gosh. Dedication. In the news today. I found this giant box of them on eBay, and there are some right sorry cases, let me tell you. What's this? Wild things? What do you think I am? A grizzly bear? What's this? EB? Yeah, you know what I thought was missing from the PS1 controller? The L2 and R2 buttons being on the top, the L1 and R1 buttons being on the front, and every single other button being in completely the wrong place. What realm of chaotic evil did this thing come from? Electronics boutique? What are you? A hairdresser? What's this? Oh, okay, another gamester. That's good. Sensitivity? Low, medium, or high? What? Do you not like being bullied and why are the grips on a right angle is this a video game controller or a shelf what's this four gamers this isn't four gamers it's four fruitcakes who in the shit out there wanted their controller to look like the letter h oh atomic <laughs> Oh, that's disgusting. Thank you for putting an udder on my controller oh what's this the air pad why is it called that is it is it... oh god it's another motion controller Heads up, dude! <laughs> Feast your eyes on this godforsaken sack. What do I even say about it? It's like I'm playing a game with a dinner plate, but without a tasty pickle on it. Basically, how it works is that you turn the tilt mode on, and through the power of air, it acts as a D-pad. Except it doesn't. It says right here that it's registering movement, but it won't actually move anything until you've poured your gravy and potatoes all over the floor. And that makes racing games an absolute joy. You need to practically turn it upside down to get it to register anything. And no, you don't hold it like a steering wheel and turn it for racing games. You hold it flat out in front of you like a begging Victorian orphan. And it's even better when you play a driving game with slippery steering and car crash physics like Destruction Derby 2. Oh, well shit, there goes my hood. Oh, and don't even bother trying to type your name with it unless you're called Pursnop. <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> if you turn it upside down, it becomes an alien spacecraft. <laughs> but does it work with anything else? Like, Cash Banuka 2? Yes, it does. Surprisingly well, in fact. 
but it's terrible. It is so unbelievably delayed, but every single other button is fine, including the D-pad. You've got all the buttons you need right here, so why would you need to turn the tilt on? I mean, sure, it does emulate analog stick sensitivity, so if you ever wanted to make Crash walk like a dying Elvis while you give your controller a long sniff, then this is the thing for you. Well, while we're on a two binge, let's check out Medieval 2, because you can't have enough twos unless you have a Daria. I do! Luckily, it works, but man, is it awkward. If you want Dan to run anywhere, you need to beg until your arms fall off. And the gangly spastic movement he has makes something as simple as walking into a sword to pick it up practically impossible. Overall, if you want to play any PS1 game at all, but make everything about it worse, pick up the air pad. Somebody should do 100% challenge runs with this thing. Oh, God, no. No. Don't look at me. I choose life. And speaking of life, here's a thing that looks like it could resuscitate it back to you. The PS1 programmable joystick from the Game Machine Input Device series. And I picked this up with my arms from the Body Skeleton Limb series. In all fairness, though, this is a really neat piece of tech that works like any other third-party joystick, except that you're able to assign any action to any button. And it even comes with a sticker sheet for your ultimate pro gammon setup. And some of these stickers do make perfect sense, while others make me question what kind of games people are picking up. There's a button to make your car go and another to make your car crash. There's a button to release a nuclear bomb. There's a button to make you fart. There's a button to make you fart on a ball. There's a button to make your friends never talk to you again. And when you're finally sick of all the ways you can give off eggy gases, there's even a button to make you give up and cry. Moving on, here's a special little gadget I got from Germany this time, which is pretty cool because the package it arrived in came with a free page of German newspaper for all the latest special offers. <laughs> Just in case you were looking for a Westerschirm Linomatic or a Globus Wiener Wurst. The accessory itself is actually a one-handed controller for the PS1, and that's honestly a great idea. I've always wanted to play Lego Island 2 while eating my Doritos and leaving my fingers crumbly and greasy. After all, you can't just assume that everyone that likes games can use both their arms, or even has both of their arms. And after using this controller... Maybe that's for the best. Take a peek at this thing. I want to play video games with it, not eat cereal. I get it. Accessibility is very important, but you know what else is? Using action buttons at the same time as moving, which you can't do here. You try <laughs> playing Doom with one hand. You bloody try. Strafing and weapon switching is over here. Shooting is over here while moving is over here. Sprinting is over here. It's a total mess. But screw Doom. How about we play something manly like Klonoa? Which is a little better because whichever direction you move, the same action buttons are right by your thumb. But the trade-off for that is the skin on the end of your thumb. Honestly, the games that this works the most reliably with are the simplest ones like Tweenies Game time or Teletubbies. You know, something not taxing whatsoever so that you can play it while looking at the newspaper and ordering some chili Heidelbeeren. Well, maybe you could play Karashi with it as well, and you could even look up the solutions to the puzzle while you play. And I suppose you could always use it with a mouse for Quake 2 or Final Doom, but now we're getting way too specific. Basically, <laughs> if you can play the game with your eyes shut, you can play it with the one-handed controller. Anything else is not worth it, which is a huge shame because it would be great to have a controller that you can use while itching your legs. Jeez, it's getting cold in here. I'm just gonna zip this up quickly. Hello! Oh my god, it's world famous singer-songwriter Nicole Shirtzipper. I'm managing a hot new rap band and they want me to give you their new merchandise. Oh, cool. What is it, Nicole? Ah. Yeah. Uh. You guys remember Thrill Kill? Ultra violent, ultra naughty, boring and badly controlling PS1 cage fighter that was banned for being too full of fishnets? <laughs> well, the game may have been scrapped, but the code itself never was. Long story short, it was repurposed into another PS1 game starring the rap group Wu Tang Clan. Yeah. And some copies came with this controller. I this is remember. exactly what you think it is. It's a PS1 controller shaped like the logo of the Wu-Tang Clan. Meaning you can finally play Parappa the Rapper the way it was meant to be played. It is, without a doubt, the single most uncomfortable thing I've ever held. And I've held my own chi- Can't fly with Caddy. I personally did not play Wu-Tang Clan. That, uh, the game, my brothers did. And I was always there to watch them. And I remember that horrendous controller we had. It was so bulky.
<laughs> it was so bold. <laughs> Every single button does not line up. There's absolutely no grip for your palms here, but a giant claw for your knuckles there. The triggers jut out and are also not aligned. And the worst thing about it is that this was easily the most expensive controller I got for this video, including import fees. This moronic object set me back $400. This is a collector's item. And by that I mean I now use it to collect nuts. Anyway, what the hell is the game itself like? Not sure when I'll ever talk about it again, so let's take a quick look. Why not? <laughs> Are you for real? A parental lock? I had to be 18 to buy the game to begin with, and now you think I'm six. What, you don't think kids can look in the manual and read shapes? I want to see dismemberment! Oh, I'd like to see that as well! Oh! Hey, the parental lock maybe was a good idea after all because I am inconceivably offended by all of this. Which is more offensive to you? The quality of the FMV or that everybody in the intro looks like a balloon? I'm gonna pick, um... <laughs> Oh, Jerry Bastard. Dirty Bastard, <laughs> also known as Dirt McGirt. <laughs> he, he, he is my kind of guy. Somewhere in China, present day, a load of monks are preparing for a Wu Tang Clan concert when old man Haggis gets way too close to the camera and says he wants to go to America and force the band to teach him their own martial arts so that they can work together to take over the world. What am I playing and what am I playing it with? The game is everything I was expecting. It's Thrill kill in every awful way. No control over whereabouts you attack, no focus, no strategy. But now I'm playing it with a worse controller. Dirty has three chambers. Oh no. Such so like call the cleaners. <laughs> Look at this. Why does he run even when not moving anywhere? All of this is disgusting. I don't even know if I should be playing the game with this thing or holding up a bank. The D pad is so spongy and stiff, you end up pressing multiple directions accidentally all the time. And it's not just in Wu Tang. Playing anything on this thing is agonizing. From something as hard as Rayman 1 to as easy as Tigger's Honey Hunt. Make it a vicious act. I mean, if anything, playing this game with this controller has really connected me with gangster rap culture. In fact, I think I could do a great rap right now. Hello, boys. I'm number one, playing on my PS1. I like eggs. I eat a m. Controller shaped like a w. Pull my hair. I don't care. Grab my hair. I'll care a lot. Play the game. It's so hot. I smoke pot in a pot with a pot. Stop. Don't stop. I like Tupac. He led the way. His name is very nearly Tupac. In conclusion, this controller may be the worst beautiful. thing that I own, but at least it's not a BP controller. <laughs> In fact, next time you want a band logo to be used as a video game controller, make sure it's from my favorite metal band. <laughs> I think I need to wash my mouth out after that. So how about instead we take a look at the coolest box for a thing that I own? Oh yeah, <laughs> this is a PS1 <laughs> 3 arcade stick. Very, very cool looking thing indeed. I mean, if you ever wanted to give uh, Nina Williams a, a f a four jugs, then this box is all you're gonna need. Once you get the old bad boy out, it quickly mm -hmm. becomes nowhere near as cool as what it's kept in. The sticker here looks embarrassingly cheap, and it's an extremely basic joystick without any shoulder button inputs. But still, I can't deny it's cool as hell as a complete package. Just remember that if your child has an upside down head, they can't play it. And I know you really want to, but you're not allowed to set your child on fire. My favorite thing though, is that inside the box were these crappy little trading cards with the most unimpressed and uninterested Lay Wu Long I have ever seen in my life. Whoa, don't get too excited, Lei. You'll give yourself piles. So ultimately, even though I do love the box, the uh. contents inside is a little bit disappointing. But at least it isn't a giant grey dump like this. Hey kids, that's a neat console you've got there. Do you want to play it with another console? This is the PS1 ASCIiWare joystick. And even though it gives you every button that was missing from the Tekken 3 pad, they're all bundled together in illogical places. And by the way, it's bigger than the damn console you plug it into. At least it has a turbo function and even an auto turbo function, so you don't even need to hold down the button you want to rapid fire. Making backwards dash running in Castlevania absolutely no issue at all. Uh -huh. Making you an indestructible god in Street Fighter or making Tetris absolutely goddamn impossible. 36 punches a second. Blimey, that's a lot, isn't it? Why? <laughs> Ow, my face. Eh, I don't know. Maybe I'm being too harsh on it. I mean, after all, it is called Slech. <laughs> What's that? What's that on the horizon? Oh my god, it's so beautiful. It's on the horizon. Like... 
Uh, the, like the sea. Well, my son, it's one of the rarest PS1 accessories out there. The boil controller. <sighs> Seriously, though, the ASCII sphere means business. Look at this box. The fake steel crate holes, the mention of six axis, even though I thought that was a PS3 thing, but no, here it is. It even has a training disc. It's a controller so advanced, it requires a degree to use it. I have never heard of a situation where if you're playing a difficult game, you start looking up how to beat it, and then look up how to beat the controller. So you admire the box for a second and then open it up. Or you could enter your hand through the perfectly cut Stanley knife slot from when you accidentally slice into it from taking it out of the box it shipped in. And Whoopsies. here it is. The lovely little cancerous lump. It looks like if you <laughs> left it on the floor, it would leave a sticky trail behind it. But before I write it off entirely, let's check out this training disc. You are now in sector 375-95. You want me to learn how to use this thing, right? Right, so the basic training is pretty straightforward. The magical testy up here is designed to be physically pushed in all sorts of directions. And the game tells you to be gentle with your pushes and pulls because every subtle movement you make against the ball here does something different. Pushing it away from you, pulling it up, pushing it down, twisting it, all so that you can steer this little spaceship around the map. It's ambitious, I'll give it that. But you know who else was ambitious? Stalin. Once you're left alone in the void of space, freely controlling yourself, it falls apart. The game wants you to do things like push forward gently to move forward, but then push hard forward to dip downwards, or push left gently to strafe left, but push hard left to bank left. It's so damn unnatural. When you're doing it one move at a time, it's absolutely fine, but strangely, flying through space at 500 miles a second doesn't mix well with you remembering every single angle this sack wants to be tickled on, and you end up not being able to control anything. So why don't we try out the obvious test choice, Cooler World? I mean, I I already have his mother's head on a pike. Yeah, as I suspected, the second we take the ulcer out of the mouth, it doesn't work. The controller worked fine with the spaceship test disc, but look at this. The ball doesn't know if it's rolling or turning or looking or boinging or splatting or blinking or blonking. Thanks for responding perfectly to all my pushes and pulls and squeezes and twists. It's like if Jigsaw created Bop It. How about we try out Shrek Treasure Hunt? Well, to start with, the menus were absolutely fine. That's, that's okay. But the game itself, I mean, it kind of speaks for itself, right? The controller is all about finesse. I mean, fair enough. I know Shrek isn't exactly a swan lake ballerina, but however gently I touch the ball, he absolutely freaks out. <laughs> Why does this thing exist? Who asked for it? Who was sitting at home playing Metal Gear Solid and said to themselves, oh boy, I really wish this was Rubber Gear Squishy. This thing is an abomination and I'm putting it down because I'm absolutely certain this is malignant. And you know what else nobody <laughs> likes and wishes they could put down? toddlers but that's not legal so instead what we do is push them aside and leave them entertained with baby controllers for the playstation oh yeah these are also real it's a controller for the ps1 for a dumb stupid smelly baby <coughs> you can give it to a toddler to chew on and beat croc at the same time without the ability to attack no less this is a very clever baby <coughs> this controller in particular was japanese only and came bundled with a game called guru guru torn orangutan this is perhaps the most unassuming box for a game I've ever seen. There is absolutely zero information on it. Not even the back of it can help you out. If you play around, please clean up. Sound advice. The game starts up and... Please get out of my personal space. Okay, so I'm on this screen and nothing is working. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to... Oh! Hang on. This is a microphone? Sweet. I wasn't expecting that. Just gotta say hello to the cute little dog and away we go. Did you know they eat you in Korea? Okay, cool. Now I've gotta put my name in and... What? Is that... Is that a naked toad? Ah. <laughs> well, at least they can't reproduce. Okay, cool. I guess I've got to pick where I want to go now. So I'm feeling a little bit drawn to the top one. And then, um, uh, yeah, feeling drawn to the top one again. I think what we've got to do here is shout into the microphone when it's safe to cross the road. But maybe I need to know the Japanese word for go because I can't get them to move. Go, 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 go. Ah, I changed my mind. Back, back. Yay, I finally did it right. <laughs> I wish I didn't do it right. <laughs> Let's try another game then. How about this one by the Kidney House? Here we have to pick the oven that we want to jump inside and then we... Uh, I honestly have no idea, but I'm gonna go and eat this cookie here and... Uh, yeah, I'm getting way too ahead of myself. I'm gonna quit before I mess it up. Oh no, I won. Okay, well, uh, what do I do now? 
<laughs> I don't know, but anywhere is better than here. And good timing, too, because the poor dog clearly wet itself. Oh, okay. We've got some hide and seek now. Aha. You can't get away that easy. I see where you went. What? Oh, my mistake. I thought I saw you go in there, but you clearly didn't because instead I found a little old man. Then this duck arrives for the fun and... <coughs> Why does everyone in this game sound like they're being sick? The controller itself is kind of neat, though. It's cute. It has all the buttons it needs. It stands up on its own so it can be doubled as a toy. But using it for anything else other than the game it was made for is a death sentence. There's <laughs> only two buttons and a D-pad in between them, for Christ's sake. <sighs> Uh-oh. I'm... Dad. Look at the way this smug asshole winks at you. He knows you can't do anything with him and he thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> well, he wants you to press that button down there. Well, if I can give it any credit whatsoever. D-pad, X, circle. It's the perfect controller for Pepsi, man. And this wasn't the only time Japan did this. They had exactly the same design used for Michael Rat. And even more confusingly, Winnie the Pooh in a combo pack. You get a controller and a game. Two poos for the price of one. And I'm personally very excited because according to Google Translate, when you talk, Mr. Wow will answer. <laughs> oh, and check this out. You can even wipe the trumpet and you can also lottery. Gambling and kids go hand in hand. Well, this kid likes gambling anyway. Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier. Plus, if you really want to, you can always use the Wu-Tang Clan controller with the game so Winnie ends up in the Poo-Tang Clan. Please forget I ever said that. <laughs> Don't hurt me, Pooh. <laughs> okay, good. Pooh is dead. Right, so here's the main menu, and all you can do here is waddle Pooh around like he's in a game of Monopoly. This animation, this <laughs> he animation. He looks so sad. The first thing I ran into was a dandelion blowing mini game where you need to blow into the microphone to get it working, and that's kind of cool. Except the microphone responds to any noises, not just blowing, so you don't need to blow at all, and you can just go. <laughs> Or you can blow over and over again into the mic to make Pooh sound like he's sucking a golf ball through a hose. Oh, check it out. I found yeah. Eeyore's Casino. No, I'm not joking. You take your lottery tickets, put them in a hole in a tree, shove Pooh in the hole, watch him inflate, wait for him to... And then win a spider, which makes Pooh go... You want to know the best thing, though? The microphone itself is actually mapped to the PS1 controller's shoulder buttons, meaning that you can shout at Croc to make him shimmy left and right. <laughs> and you can play Tenchu, hiding in the dark and stealthily no. slicing up your enemies with... I'm right here, surprise! And you can make Crash Bandicoot slide with... Whoa! 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 It works with basically any game you can think of. No. Don't, don't try out Tomb Raider 2, unless you really really love rolling around on the floor. Now, I wonder what happens when you press Mickey's button down here. Don't even f***ing think about it. Well, you know what, Mickey? That's too small for me anyway. I prefer my buttons nice and big. This is the once again Japanese-only <sighs> kid station controller. Warning, if your kid is crying, this controller will kill them. Look at the size of this beast. If this controller had an exercise bike, it would be dusty. It was made for a series of games in Japan that branded the Kid Station logo on the cover. If the game had that logo, you could use this controller. And yes, this finally means I can play my copy of Thomas the Tank in Danking the way it was meant to be played. Hey there, no. fat controller. Do you want to see my fat controller? Logically, tiny buttons should be great for tiny fingers. But if you're three years old, those fingers spend more time in your mouth or going... <laughs> and that's why this controller exists no mistakes will be made with this no sir just make sure that the game you play doesn't involve moving anywhere because yeah <laughs> what you can do though is use it with the mouse which is great because i've always wanted to play terry pratchett's disc world with a bongo <laughs> i like this controller <gasps> dad what the hell is this thing? And if this is what your kids look like when they see the controller, just wait until you see what happens when they play with it. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> this pleases me. You know what I've always wanted to know? What English words are young Japanese boys wearing on their pajamas? Let's have a quick look. Um, high, super, point, mile, cham, picnic, field, commit! <laughs> Actually, scratch that. Pick yourself up the PS1 fishing rod. The only controller mm. that allows you to get a rod and go fishing. It's not working. Fish ain't <laughs> I only have one game that this thing is 100% compatible with. Real Fishing 2. Because Real Fishing 1 didn't have enough real fishing in it. And the game Aww. is... Yep, this is real fishing, alright. 
It's real fishing because nothing happens. Look, it's really cute that you can throw the rod to cast the line with motion controls, and the reel itself works well too. But whatever bait I use, wherever I cast, how fast I reel, it doesn't make a single difference. I'm glad the controller works, but the game just doesn't care. Oh my god, I got a fish! Reel it in! Reel it in, boy! Reel it! Aww. Oh, bye then. Why do people like fishing? Oh my god, I got another, I got another fish! Reel it in slower, reel it in slower, reel it in slower. Slowly does it. <laughs> oh, bye then. Ah, balls to this. Let's try playing the game that the fishing rod was really made for. Nightmare creatures. Oh my god, it's working. It works. I can't believe it. And the casting motion control, for some alien reason, is mapped to the staff attacks. Yes, I'm slicing zombies in half with a fishing pole. This makes me feel so powerful. But the jump scares are still very, you know, I, uh, you know, you know. Okay. Caddy. Wow. At this point, I started to think a little out of the box. Maybe this real thing here works as a paddle of some sort. So I tried out Buster Move 2 to see if oh. I could move the cannon with it, and nope, no. it didn't work. I could not. Then I thought, hey, wait a second, this here is a left analog stick, so maybe this acts as a right one. Meaning that I tried out Ape Escape, and sadly, it didn't even pass the menu screen. Then I tried RC Stunt Copter, and the exact same thing happened. So what about racing games then? Like, <sighs> Colin McRae Rally? No. No. Uh, Gran Turismo. No. So then I tried a load of other random games like Spider-Man 2. No. Mortal Kombat. No. SpongeBob. No. Wipeout. No. And none of these did anything. Aww. Except. And then I tried Gex 3D. For some completely unfathomable reason against all human decency, when I play the game with a normal controller, everything works absolutely fine. But the second I put the fishing rod in, the noises began. What in God's ripe, greeny pastures is going on here? What's happened to the music, the sound effects, and why does the fishing rod of all things cause it to happen? Oh my god, what's what's that boy? You have a bite? Oh well hot Jiminy, let's crank it up then. I wound in the lead winder. I know what you're thinking. This is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. What is it? Well, ladies and gents, this thing, this Inside out rubber Johnny is apparently a controller lead winder and it's as useful as a carpet shop in a hospital. It calls itself a lead winder, <coughs> but in reality, it does absolutely nothing. It's just a loose and floppy pair of old lips that gets in the way of your cables and adds a million steps to something that's supposed to be one. You fold the end of the controller extension lead through here, unravel it slowly as it chews on its own cable, fold it back through the same hole to keep it in place, and when you leave it on the floor, it looks like a chewed up foreskin. In fact, the more I look at it, it's not even a lead winder for your own controller. It's a lead winder for the extension lead that's compatible with the winder. So all you're doing here is winding up the extra controller length on top of the standard length. Who designed this? Oh, of course, it's Mad Cats. Who else would it be? You know what? I'm going to make this process ten times easier and fold you inside out to be used as an ornamental vase. <laughs> look at my poor little controller. It looks like it needs circumcising. And while we're talking about cutting off the end of your gentleman's whistle, here's the PS one cockpit. Released by Optech, an anagram for PC Toe, this is the PS1 cockpit and holy shit is it ugly. It feels like you're holding a knife and fork that you can't separate. The best thing about flying a plane with a cockpit controller in a video game is flying a plane with a cockpit controller in a video game. And this thing does not let you fly a plane with a cockpit controller in a video game. At least not on Ace Combat 3. No matter what settings I use, the steering outright doesn't work, but everything else seems to work fine, including pushing and pulling back on the deck to change my height, which is completely awful because this is what happens every time you do that. <laughs> Does it work on Independence Day? No. Duke Nukem? No. Driver? No. Point Blank? No. Simpsons Wrestling? No. Stuart Little 2? Yes. The PS1 cockpit controller 
works with Stuart Little 2 and nothing else that I tried. Out of all of the flight games I own, I honestly couldn't believe it. Why does this work? You can even turn left and right to move the sewage hamster and the accelerator pedal is your jump. So instead of stepping on a mouse, we're shooting it off to space. <laughs> This is the PS1 Flight Deck Simulator controller for use specifically with this game here, Jet De Go. In fact, this is from the same exact oh, company no. behind the train simulator from earlier. These Hater. guys love themselves some public transport. Where's their bus controller featuring old solid chewing gum? My favorite thing about the controller, I have to say, is the back of it. Why is it shaped like this? If it were any bigger, you could go and watch an opera in it. I have two. Why? Oh, Jesus, here we go again with the overstimulating intro cutscene. These people really like their public transport. This time it even has a love letter at the start. Do I have to sit you on my knee and explain how a relationship with a plane isn't gonna work? Lesson? I don't need to learn. Let's go right into flight mode. Gonna give myself some power for the takeoff. Whoa, it vibrates. Oh my God. It actually makes you feel like the wheels are running along the grooves of the track. This feels pretty realistic. And then when you eventually take off, the vibration stops gradually as more weight is taken off of the wheels. This feels weirdly authentic. I way prefer this over the train game. <laughs> I'm sure that's fine. See? Look at that. I was a success. I even learned to land the plane too. There's a button for wheel deploying and another button for braking while the steering wheel shakes around as you slow down. I am unironically loving this. Say hello to Captain Bermuda Triangle. I mean, I can't tell you what is going on or what anybody is saying, but I must be doing good because I got awarded some more X-rated plane footage with a guitar solo. Oh! I think the FBI will be after me soon, so does it work with Wipeout 3? Short answer, yes it does, but to accelerate you have to put your thumb over here like some sort of angry lobster because this here doesn't do anything. I then tried Mortal Kombat and sadly I couldn't even get past the menus, okay. but then I got into Spyro 2 and where the menus were a little bit glitchy, I actually managed to get the game fully working. You're seeing this right. I am steering Spyro, not only on the ground, but in the air as he glides like a plane, just like our Lord Jesus intended. If though, for whatever reason, you decide to stop steering Spyro, he won't stop. So just get ready to play a version of Spyro 2 where he's trying to hold it in and you'll be right as rain. What if there was another? <laughs> yep, believe it or not, there is indeed another PS1 Why flight is there so Apparently, many? this one claims to be able to work with any flight games. And the seller I got it from even mentioned that each of the sticks here acted as analog sticks on a DualShock controller. So you bet your juicy ass I went straight into RC Stunt Copter to try it out. My name is Enne. Well, blow me down and call me Blow. This is actually amazing. It works really well. With each analog stick getting its own dedicated joystick, I breezed through the Stunt Copter training within a few minutes. And yes, it still sounds like you're trying to get the instructor off. Hold it. Good. Easy. Hold that position. Good. Now hold it. Okay, almost done. Oh my god! Oh, I can't believe it! Woohoo! You've done this before, haven't you? And unfortunately, it also looks like it. But he has two. No, don't use your left thumb. And don't use it to write with or open doors. <laughs> I'm Adolf. G police. You know who works there? The G policeman. Holy mother, this Font. What does any of this even say? New mittens? Onions? Johnny? I mean, the controller works with the game, no doubt about that. Game's shit though, innit? And by the way, your hardcore scary police squad is an acronym for guinea pig. <laughs> Next, I thought I'd give Forsaken a shot. It's an underrated PS1 first person shooter in a little flying craft, and yep, it works wonderfully with this controller as well. But the one I was really hoping to get working was Ape Escape. I mean, think about it. Dual analog sticks, dual grabby sticks. It's perfect, right? Well, no. I tried it, it didn't work. Aww. And that makes me a saddy caddy. Aww. And you know the best thing to do when you're sad? You dance for me. Dance, dance, my little puppet. Dance for me, right away! Oh yeah, how many of you had one of these bastards in the PS1 yes. days? The dance man. Just about as nostalgic as you can get if you owned a dance mat. This one in particular is a special one-off mat that came as part of a bundle pack with the PS1 version of Jungle Book Groove Party. And this box, 
This this box should be studied in box class for how not to make a box. Just look at this dreadful heap. The 2D car, the snake right above the ugly 3D PS1 renders, the vultures that are the size of peas, the game box window that doesn't keep the game as displaying inside the window, Mowgli's teeth. <laughs> How could you not grab this off the shelves and buy it immediately? One of the biggest selling points on the box is that Lou Bega has a music video in it. No? Well, how about the fact that the dance mat is called the Thrustmaster? <laughs> no. Join the ranks and walk in line. And the best thing about dance mats is that you don't only have to use them with dancing games like Jungle Book or DDR. All the controller buttons you need are on the mat, so you can play anything from Spyro 3 to Tony Hawk. Hey, look, it's like I'm actually using a real skateboard. I hope they make that a reality in the future. Oh, wait a minute. I seriously don't recommend that you play overboard with it, though. I feel like I'm playing Twister while being shot at. But I seriously do recommend taping the dance mat onto a wall and playing the first stage in Parappa the Rapper for the next best thing to Parappa the Rapper VR as you can get. No, <laughs> <laughs> and then that crazy country over there, you know, over there. Japan. They saw that dance mats were selling like hotcakes on the PS1. So you know what they decided to make? They decided to make a dance mat for people with hand fits. This is the PS1 mm -hmm. Poppin controller for a series of games labeled Poppin Music from Konami again. The sad thing though is that it's only for Japan. So please don't tell anyone. <laughs> or, or else. <laughs> the police. This was made by B Manny because we don't want you to be womany, and it was ported to the home console market after a very successful Japanese arcade cabinet of the same name. Personally, I have six games in the Pop and Music collection as you follow the adventures of Grandma's Kitchen Tile Hair Girl. Let's party, Pop and Music! Yeah! That's in Push! Pop and music is kind of like DDR mixed with rock band drums. It's pretty straightforward. You see a bop, you bop it. You see a fly, you swat it. You see a spot, you pop it. But surely there's got to be more to it than that. How to play. Good. <laughs> Glad we got that cleared up. Honestly, there's not much to say, but what you hear is this. Yes. I have always wanted to play along to my favorite disco hits while smashing a jackhammer on the table. Won't you take me to Funky Town? And the most adorable feature, it even has pocket station compatibility. I like this thing a lot. I'm going to ring them up and tell them how much I like it. I think I called the Yakuza. But I know what you're thinking. Does it work with other rhythm games like Vib Ribbon? Well, you'll be pleased to know it sure does. And half of the fun is trying to figure out which button does what. Yes. Yes. No. All right, then how about if we try the best rhythm game of all time? Tarzan. Has anybody got a wipe? Amazingly, everything works, except for the fact that I can't run backwards. So if you're a Tarzan PS1 speedrunner that doesn't ever need to run backwards, this is the controller for you. Personally, I always wanted to smack a bit of plastic to call for a gorilla hint, so I'm very happy. The buttons themselves are really sensitive though, so if you do so much as breathe too heavily on it, you might- No, go away, leave me alone, Turkish delight, stupid traffic light. Pop off controller. I'm gonna run away to Crash Team Racing now. Everything here in the menu works wonderfully, and I was getting really excited to play the game. But then the character select screen happens, and I officially turned the game into a roundabout. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea why it's doing this. I'm not touching anything. <laughs> you spin me right round, baby, right round, like a cash panuka. <laughs> crash Team Racing, more like Crash Team Retching. Then I tried out Bugs Bunny and Taz Time Busters, and I have the same issue. I can only move in one direction forever, but at least now I'm in a 3D space, which means I can also jump, kick, change characters and move a total of 15 degrees to the right. I'm pretty sure that's a feature on the back of the box. Then I got a hold of Taz, threw him into the lake and watched him struggle as he slowly drowned because I couldn't get him back up. What is it that the kids say in Twitch chat nowadays? Poppers? So yeah, Konami were the kings of PS1 musical instruments, weren't they? They basically did Katai Hero, DDR and rock band drums before anyone else on the PS1. And they also did this. 
as a person that plays piano. What in the fuck? Oh, exactly. Everyone. It's the hardest working chef who keeps cooking for his customers even though he has COVID sandwich. <laughs> Cover your mouth when you cough. And today we're going to be frying sausages with my new gadget, a hob with an organ. Right, I feel like I'm going insane. Okay, so <laughs> along with everything else Konami did for musical instrument rhythm games on the PlayStation, they also did this, mm -hmm. Beat Mania. And where I was initially expecting it to make me feel like... <laughs> I later discovered it's basically a primitive version of DJ Hero with a keyboard, so instead I felt like... It works! Yeah, it's pretty fun. There's not much to say about it. It's just your typical rhythm game, but with a wiki wiki woo and a... DJ! DJ! But what I really want to know is, can you play Lego Racers on it? Well, you tell me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though a few buttons on the controller are mapped to the keyboard end of the deck, the disc scratching bit is only mapped to up and down, so you can't turn. And the same rules apply to Alien Trilogy, which even though is very depressing that I can only move forward and back and strafe, makes it all worth it when I can say out loud... Look, Mom, I shot an alien with a piano! Well, I guess it works perfectly with Pong. Oh my God. Playing Pong with a gas hob. Now I've seen everything. Oh my man, this has been absolutely exhausting. I'm starting to flag a bit now. But trust me, don't go away yet, because I think I've saved the best for last. Do you remember a few years back, I made a video all about retro PlayStation 1 magazines. In some no. of those issues were picture adverts for upcoming gaming controllers and peripherals, including a PS1 controller cup holder, a G-Con light gun bazooka, a PS1 controller with the England flag on it, and a PS1 controller that is also a shoe. And you are all going to be so sad to hear that no matter how many Google searches I did and no matter how many eBay searches I did, I couldn't find these things anywhere, and even worse, I couldn't find even a mention of them on the internet really? outside of those magazines. So I think they were jokes. Ha ha ha, you got me. <laughs> but there was one thing I managed to uncover from those magazines. One single thing. And Which I'm is? so happy I did, because... Hey kids, meet your new stepdad! Hello there, little scamps! I did it! I found it! The PS1 glove! You thought that the Nintendo Power Glove was the only one? No siree, no Williams. Here is the officially licensed video game control glove for the PlayStation. The only controller to get you in the game. Might want to plug in the console first, though. What are the features of this ungodly instrument? Compatibility with all PlayStation games, approved official PlayStation peripheral, fits comfortably onto the forearm and hand, and you become part of the game. Holy shit, what a feature! I have been desperate for years to jump into my PS1 and have an affair with Bob the Builder's wife. You take it out of the box, strap it down to your arm, and there you go. Here it is. This wretched junk, this parasite, feels horrible. It follows every single finger and wrist movement you make like a conjoined twin that never made it. To make things move on screen, you have to bend your arm around like Betty Spaghetti to make this lever system work, and it takes a surprising amount of muscle to do it. Plus, the buttons are all smushed together, it has the worst thumb button placement I've ever seen on anything, and I don't know if I should be playing a video game or studying black holes talking like a robot. And I know it's predictable, but... I've got to try Glover on it, haven't I? No. Jumping flash? No. Dave Mirror freestyle BMX? Mm. No. Do I even dare? Freaking Bubsy. No. Oh! Once upon a time, the end. After all of that, I could really do with a massage. Anybody got anything to help me out? Excuse me? Is, is that... Is that a PS2 vibrator? Oh, 
there you are. <laughs> All right, I forgot. I did that with my. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. That was very interesting. Like, legit. It was fun. Excuse me, I'm sorry. That was a lot of fun. My rabbit likes to shit on my sofa. Come flabby caddy. I do think you guys. Oh, wait. Okay. So I I do enjoy that. That was I do. I did enjoy that. That was a lot of fun. A lot of um, PS1 accessories I was not expecting to see or didn't know even existed, but so it was a lot of fun. So thank you again, Sonic EXER or Sonic XER. Wow, that I'm here, I promise. But thank you for the suggestion and I should work on a few more later on this week. Until next time, see you guys later. Ta-ta.